this news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power. This is the Noon Barbados Today update for Thursday, February 27th, 2014. I'm Dawn Paris. The private sector is being blasted for disrespecting and failing agriculture in Barbados and being partly to blame for the country's billion-dollar import bill. CEO of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, is the one pointing the accusatory finger. He says despite incentives to invest in agriculture, businesses aren't willing to contribute to the sector, but they still want the benefits. The problem is that they want easy money. And our private sector doesn't seem to understand that if our country is to develop along some, some lines, if we are to stop this current leakage of foreign exchange out of this country, all right, they need to also invest in the agriculture sector. I've always spoke about the thing about linkages, backward linkages. We have again paid more lip service to that than actual doing it. Okay, we need to see hotels investing in farms. That is how it's going to happen. We have one establishment who has invest in the farm, but how many establishments? We need to see supermarkets investing in farms. We need to see our feed company investing in farms. They cannot expect, okay, to just stay on the perimeter to reap the benefits of our labor of farms and then don't want to invest in the farm themselves. Paul says this type of disrespect for agriculture has been going on for far too long and the sector needs to be given pride of place. He also insisted that if hotels get tax relief as government has promised, they'll ignore local produce even more. And chairperson of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados is just as adamant that hotels need that assistance. Renee Coppin tells Barbados today she won't be backing down in her lobbying for hoteliers because they need the concessions to remain competitive. I can understand manufacturing and agriculture feeling that, you know, that puts them at a disadvantage because obviously once we have these concessions, many of our colleagues may go out and look to import and to bypass the local sector. But I think that there are ways that we can work around that. I, don't, I can't say I have all of them in my head. But I know that there are ways that we can find to partner better between the various sectors, manufacturing, agriculture. And I think philosophically, most Barbadian hoteliers want to support local business and want to support local manufacturing and agriculture. So we just have to figure out how best to do that. The Intimate Hotels of Barbados Group represents about 52 of the island's small hotel properties. That's about 15% of the total hotel room stock. It employs more than 550 people. Opposition leader Mia Motley is warning that the education and health sectors in Barbados are in jeopardy. She says government's cuts in both areas could put Barbados in a precarious situation and it should be addressed sooner rather than later. Motley was the featured speaker at the opening of the Barbados Association of Office Professionals 17th Annual Conference at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. It is inconceivable to me that the two areas in which Barbados and the only two areas in which we are globally recognized in the World Competitiveness Report, namely education and health care, should now be the subject of cuts in expenditure to gut the competitive edge that we have globally. There are only two areas that the World Competitiveness Report says that we are ahead of the pack. It is education and it is health care. You do not destroy the very platform that gives you that competitive edge. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power. In the region, Chinese citizens who want to visit Jamaica will be able to do so in a few weeks' time visa-free. The Jamaican government is waiving as visa rep <clears throat> Sorry.
All right. In the region now, Chinese citizens who want to visit Jamaica will be able to do so visa-free in a few weeks' time. The Jamaica government is waiving visa requirements for Chinese tourists who want to visit for 30 days or less. Tourism and Entertainment Minister Wycombe McNeil says it's all in an effort to get a slice of the large and expanding Chinese tour tourism market. He says government is also working to get China to waive visa restrictions for Jamaicans traveling to that Asian country. Internationally now, Uganda Uganda's president isn't losing any sleep over threats by the U.S. and other countries to cut aid after the African nation enacted legislation outlawing homosexuality. A government spokesperson says the West can keep their aid and Uganda will develop without it. The Netherlands, Denmark and Norway froze aid or redirected it from the Ugandan government after the president signed a law on Monday making homosexual activity punishable by imprisonment. And that's where we end the noon update. Join us again at 6 this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadistoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and and sports. I'm Don Paris. The Business Minute is up next. The Business Minute is brought to you by To my people out there working hard to expand your horizons chasing a flawless dream keep your eyes on the prize and we don't look back. It's forward thinking on to the new stuff. It's time to lay bricks on the foundation of your future. Get set with me to be sure Signia, quality solutions for your financial needs. This is the Barbados Today Business Minute for Thursday, 27 February 2014. I'm Vic Fernandes. Barbadian ice cream company Bico Limited is exporting once again after a four and a half year break. General Manager Joanne Pooler says a shipment will be sent to St. Vincent and the Grenadines tomorrow. Bico had ceased sending products overseas after a fire destroyed its Harbor Road cold storage plant in August 2009. Pooler is hoping tomorrow's shipment signals a fresh start for the company. There are a lot of markets out there. We're looking at all of the markets we used to export into because there's definitely some avenues there. Some businesses have begun adjusting prices as the Central Bank of Barbados moves to stop issuing one-cent coins from May 7th. But advisor to the governor, Celeste Wood, told small business leaders this week that isn't necessary as the rounding off method should only be implemented at the point of the cashier. So we are asking you not to round up. If you're going to round down or round up, but at the end of the day, it means that on the basket of goods, the customer will be paying a lot more. Even as it moves to invest more in Barbados, Flow is expanding its regional footprint. The company, operated by Columbus Communications, has completed the acquisition of Carib Cable, which operates in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Antigua and Barbuda, and St. Lucia. President and Chief Operating Officer John Reed says they're aiming to transform the regional telecommunications landscape and infrastructure. It's very important to get it right, to live up to the promise that we've made, and, and uh, we're looking forward to getting started. And now for today's financial tip. Credit cards are useful, dangerous power tools. Using them frequently makes it more likely that you'll cut your thumb off. A lot of sad stories begin with, I always paid off my credit cards every month until. That was the Barbados Today Business Minute. I'm Vic Fernandes. To my people out there working hard to expand your horizons, chasing a flawless dream. Keep your eyes on the prize and we don't look back. It's forward thinking on to the new stuff. It's time to lay bricks on the foundation of your future. Get set with me to be sure. Signia, quality solutions for your financial needs.